Three-Dimensional Vectors, Level 1. In the previous videos, we reviewed the basics of two-dimensional vectors, also known as planar vectors. In the following series of videos, we will go over three-dimensional vectors, also known as vectors in space. The transition from planar vectors to vectors in space requires the addition of a third component in order to represent the direction that points along the z-axis of a three-dimensional coordinate system. For example, the position vector with an x component of 2 and a y component of 3 is represented in a two-dimensional coordinate system as follows. Now, if we wanted to represent this same vector in 3D space, we will need to add an additional component, in this case, the z component. For this particular example, the vector is going to be located on the xy plane, so it will have a z component of 0. So this vector will have an x component of 2 and a y component of 3, and a z component of 0. In the same manner, the following vectors would be located on the xz plane and yz plane, respectively. Notice that in each case, there is a component equal to 0. Any vector in R cubed that has one component equal to 0 will lie on a coordinate plane because they resemble two dimensional vectors. In general, a vector located in space will have three components and are denoted by ordered triples as opposed to ordered pairs. If two components of a vector in R cubed are equal to 0, then the vector will lie along a line. For example, the following vectors each have two components equal to 0, and they lie in the direction of the x axis, y axis, and z axis, respectively. Just like two dimensional vectors can be represented by using the standard unit vectors, also known as standard basis vectors, we can also use the same notation to denote vectors in space. In this case, we will use the unit vector i hat, j hat, and the unit vector k hat, which represents the unit vector that points along the z axis. Any vector in space can be represented by a scalar multiple and sum of the unit vectors. For example, the vector with components 1, 2, and 3 can be represented as i plus 2j plus 3k. If a vector has 0 for every single component, it is referred to as the 0 vector and can be represented by a single point. Now, if a vector is not in standard position with a tail located at the origin and it is instead represented by two points in space, like point P for the tail or initial point and point Q, for the head or terminal point, then we can find the component form of vector v by subtracting the coordinates of the initial point from the coordinates of the terminal point, as follows. Lastly, many of the properties for two-dimensional vectors also apply to three-dimensional vectors. For example, two vectors are still equal if and only if the components of both vectors are equal. In other words, Vector u is equal to vector v if and only if the x components, y components, and z components are equal. Two nonzero vectors are still parallel if there is some scalar c such that vector a equals the scalar c times vector b. In other words, the x, y, and z components of vector a are a constant multiple of the x, y, and z components of vector b, respectively. The length or magnitude of a vector in space is calculated similarly to planar vectors. The only difference is that we include the third component into the expression as follows. This is essentially the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. To find a unit vector in the direction of a vector v, we simply take the components of vector v and divide it by the magnitude of vector v as long as vector v is not the zero vector. Lastly, the properties of vector addition and scalar multiplication given for planar vectors are also valid for vectors in space. For vector addition, we simply add the vectors component-wise. 
And when multiplying a scalar by a vector, we simply multiply this scalar to each of the vector's components. All right, let's go over some examples and illustrate how to solve various problems involving three-dimensional vectors. Find the component form of vector v and write the vector using standard unit vector notation. Sketch vector v with its initial point at the origin. All right, here we are given the initial and terminal points of a vector. In order to find the component form of vector v, we simply need to subtract the coordinates of the initial point from the coordinates of the terminal point. Doing that, we obtain the following values for the components of vector v. Next, we go ahead and write this vector using the standard unit vectors. This is a pretty straightforward process since each of the components corresponds to i, j, and k, respectively. Doing that, we obtain the following expression. Finally, we need to sketch this vector in standard position. So we start at the origin and use the components to plot the coordinates of the terminal points, just the way you plot points in a three-dimensional coordinate system. So, we go ahead and move four units along the positive x-axis and move five units along the negative y-axis, and move two units along the positive z-axis. Then, we go ahead and join these two points with a directed line segment, as follows. All right, let's go over the next example. Find the component form and magnitude of the vector, with initial point 4, negative 5, 2, and terminal point negative 1, 7, negative 3. Then, find a unit vector in the direction of this vector. All right, similar to the previous example, we are given the initial and terminal points of a vector in three dimensions. Let's call this vector vector v. So we go ahead and subtract the coordinates of the initial point from the coordinates of the terminal point as follows. This expression represents the components of vector v. Now let's find the magnitude or length of vector v. This requires an application of the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. Substituting the components into the expression and simplifying, we obtain the square root of 194 as the magnitude of vector v. All right, now that we found both the component form and the magnitude of vector v, we can go ahead and find a unit vector in the direction of vector v. We find this unit vector by simply dividing each of the components of vector v with its magnitude. Doing that, we obtain the following components for the unit vector in the direction of vector v. You can easily verify that it's a unit vector by computing the magnitude and checking that it is equal to 1. All right, let's go over the final example. Vector v has components equal to 1, negative 2 thirds, and 1 half. The initial point of vector v is 0, 2, and 5 halves. Find the terminal point. Here we're given the components of vector v and its initial point. We are asked to find its terminal point. We can figure out the terminal point by using the expression for finding the components of a vector and working backwards. We know that if we were to take the initial point and subtract each coordinate with the coordinates of the terminal point, we should obtain the component form. With this setup, we can see that finding the terminal point essentially requires us to solve for the x, y, and z coordinates of the terminal point. Isolating each expression and solving for the coordinate point, we obtain 1, 4 thirds, and 3 as the coordinates of the terminal point. All right, in our next video, we will go over slightly more challenging examples.